Hey folks, we are uh, we're gonna do some more of this today. Here, let me bump my volume a little bit. I'll probably hope you guys hear me a little bit better there. There we go. Uh, okay, great. So we're going to continue uh, our exploration of converting descent into Avernus into the in command mass combat system. And let me check my signal. Mass combat system. That sounds pretty clean. All right, uh, I just need to. Uh, if you're checking my doobly doo down below, you're gonna see uh, Twitter which I just loaded this into, and uh, just some shout out to some folks that I has the mad respects for, the DMs Guild Creator Lounge, and uh, uh, Terran and Destructive Boys Designers Blog, uh, Trant Monk for some sensible optimization ideas, uh, Dungeoneers Pack for friend support, and excellent ideas on uh, converting uh, character builds and flavor. Uh, classes and constructs, probably the best place you can go to find ideas about MTG conversion into D&D as uh, uh, creatures, art, uh, ideas, uh, uh, like uh, artifacts of magic items and encounter ideas. Uh, Zip Run Disney is it's just got great ideas about how to run games in general. Uh, Cleric Corner, uh, Riker there, he's got um, a really great ludonarrative flavoring for converting how Different classes and subclasses can be depicted in the game. Fry Minis, by far the best guy in town. Uh, check out his stuff for sneak previews, miniatures, and just general shenanigans. Good stuff. Rich Mary, also really good at flavor conversions. The Mothership, Dungeons and Dragons Discord. Um, gotta love being there. And let's see, am I current on everybody? Yep, we are current. So, okay, cool. So, what are we doing today? Um, we are descending into Avernus together. Let's flip my screen here um, so you can see what it is that we have going on here. Okay, so um, the uh, if you check out, you know, I got my stream here and top chats. Uh, what, are you, what are you doing here, buddy? What are you doing for me? Okay, great. So, like, you're looking at this here and find out more about MTG Color. You can check on that to look at um, all this stuff is uh, free previews for you if it loads in. All, all these books are free preview. Uh, you can read 100% of them before you decide if you want to buy any of them. It's basically some of the spell point mechanics that I've been involved in in the past few years and I actively use in my own game. Um, there's also the, um, the play, uh, my Patreon. You don't have to be a subscriber to Patreon to participate in this stuff uh but um you can see in the about phil kearney creations uh youtube that's what we're looking at uh to, 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 uh, yeah the in commands uh this is the document that uh is available for free play test right now you can follow that link down in the description here uh click in on that and check out uh how this content flows uh we did the uh the conversion of Horde of the Dragon Queen, first chapter, Greenest and Flames for first and second level characters, taking on EL-14 with a troop of 40 archers, went really, really well. So we are escalating to Descent into Avernus for us to uh, convert uh, war machines and battling um, Zeriel in her flying fortress at the 500 foot scale. And then you can scale down to infernal machines at the 50 foot scale or you can zoom in at normal uh, grid size at the five foot scale where you're plotting where each individual character is actually sitting on their infernal machine so right now the the last session uh that we had last week of uh, uh running infernal machines i said that i would pick up uh here on dm's guild the actual uh, infernal machine rebuild and it is it is not anything to do with the sentence into Avernus Infernal Machines. I I don't recommend it. Uh, I guess I guess if you find a use for it, good for you. But uh, like everything else, a lot of stuff that, that is presented in the um, official adventure books that Wizards puts out needs a lot of hand-holding and some strong logic pathing to make the thing work as written. So um, that's what we're doing here. Uh, why would you go fight in the Blood Wars if you can't fight in the Blood Wars? The whole theme of Descent into Avernus is even though there's this huge Blood War that's now spilling onto Elturel, the city that got pulled in hell, spoiler alert, 
Um, you're not supposed to actually engage in the blood war or defend the city. It's too tough for you. You're going to die. You need to go away and do some social encounters with demons that can do all the things that you need for them. So it becomes more of a skill challenge to convince somebody to solve your problems for you. And um, if you're an old schooler that is used to box set or first and second edition or even third edition with the, uh, with the leadership feat where you gain followers, a lot of the older editions assumed that there was a tactical war simulation sort of thing option available to you. Uh, in uh, first edition, you could gain a keep as early as sixth level and have up to 30 followers that would basically chump damage for you or, you know, throw themselves on grenades or go fetch stuff for you or cast spells on your behalf. And uh, that's been stripped out of the, the game uh, largely in third edition as just an option, but definitely in fourth edition and certainly in fifth edition, the idea of you having followers or operating at this grander scale has been stripped out of the game mechanics in favor of a deeper personal character narrative where the risk of death is minimized in favor of having a story arc that takes you from a nobody uh, to uh, a legendary 20th level hero, except that the game stops getting support at 12th level. So it's kind of like a um, a zero a zero to here. No, that you that you know you go from first level to 12th level, and then all the campaigns end. They don't really. The Wizards hasn't really put out anything that supports you scaling to 20th level. Um, so that sense of epic scale is kind of falsely. Boy, I'm I'm really dogging punching up today on Wizards of the Coast. But seriously, they don't put out content that is of the third or like barely hits third tier, nothing in the fourth tier. So it's kind of up to us to figure that out. And there's a ton of great channels that put out ideas about how you can curve your characters into actually successfully playing a third and fourth um, tier campaign. And I run first to 20th level campaigns in about Typically at about 250 hours. Um, if I'm running a Saturday game that has a three or four hour um, uh, game time, then I can typically get done with them anywhere from 12 to 15 months. Uh, the campaign that I'm running right now is a, is a time travel campaign at Eberron, and we only play one hour a week during lunchtime with my coworkers. So we are, we are pushed into the third year now at 16th level. We're expecting that campaign to end in the next nine months at, nine, at 20th level, and it's curving out pretty nicely. Uh, I'm looking forward to diving into a new game and having a longer stretch so that I can have maybe a, a, a Saturday nor uh, like a Saturday morning game to have a three or four hour burst so I can kick through campaigns uh, on an, on an annual basis again like I, I had been doing before COVID. That's when this we we started doing a, a lunchtime game and I had a Saturday morning game. Then COVID we shut down any Saturday morning gaming and I've just been living off of the uh, the one hour lunchtime adventure and now that I've got this Eberron adventure that I've been cooking up uh, and I've been doing this playtesting for Infernal Machines and I've been doing playtesting for Martial Powers I'm getting I'm getting a DM fix now and again but it's all scenarios and just more looking at stat crunching and and how does the how do these mechanics play out and which i'm incredibly pleased about but it's it's not me actually running a 1 to 20 campaign so i'm looking forward to doing that and um so the the point of all that was is that the descent into avernus campaign takes you from a first level character has you spend a lot of time in the material plane you eventually end up in hell and while you're in hell you're trying to avoid the blood the blood war as much as possible so that you can go talk to individuals that can give you leverage to then either accomplish goals on your behalf or keep you from having to, again, deal at that epic scale where you would need followers to go attack and, and take on a thousand demons or maybe uh, 250 demons at each of the posts uh, of the eight, of the eight um, uh, pylons that are keeping Elturel uh, anchored above the river Styx. Like if you have a campaign where you can cobble together some some forces to uh, fight on your behalf while you're in hell if you've got 250 demons that are trying to dig up a, a pit from the ground 
then if you have in like their you know like cr6 to 12 that's that's going to be like third or second third or fourth rank as we consider you know when you look at the playtest content here you've got uh, you've got ranks one to five that your character scales through over time and the higher a level your character gets the higher cr creatures will just follow you because you're powerful enough to be their leader like if you're a first level character and you try to tell an ogre what to do chances that ogre is just going to eat you because you haven't you don't have no show of strength so when your character starts accumulating power you can start treating ogres like minions that they start acting like minions and they start following you around same curvature we can have going into do into uh, descent into avernus where as your character accumulates more power demons are looking at you as something that they can gain ranks through because they're only looking out for themselves or what can they do to to gain power in the in the legions of devils so if you're demonstrating that you have the power to get things done then they're going to want to fall in line behind you so that they can they can basically ride your coattails to accumulate their own power and especially if you've been hired by asmodeus or demogorgon or tiamat to make a dent in the blood war much like Zariel ends up doing spoilers in descent and as uh, in, in, in the in the dia campaign she's working for asmodeus asmodeus makes her a commander of a legion of demons uh, of devils and um again spoiler alert elturel gets pulled in the hell specifically so they can dunk all the souls in the river sticks so that Zariel can suck them up into her giant machine that flies around and, and crushes people with a 500 foot swath so our idea like we discussed last time was to build descent into avernus at the 500 foot scale of combat where you can recruit by force a couple thousand demons to help you then uh rail against zariel's flying fortress climb up it punch a hole in it climb through and then have a conversation from a point of force that you need to pay attention to us the way that the adventure is written right now is you hope that you can appeal to her uh, her memories of being a good aligned creature with the help of some lost souls that you pick up along the way in your adventure to collect a, some friends of Zariel to help make a skill check to influence whether she will help you and turn her ship around and, and fight on your cause. But again, players being shenanigan the fourth the fourth tier of adventure is shenanigans so um if we're using the shenanigan pillar um you're going to probably want to punch something in the eye to prove that you deserve to be here and that you need to be listened to these in command tactic uh, this, this in command document is going to provide you with the tactics and the firepower of having enough forces to be able to go toe to toe against Ariel, her troops her flying fortress and when you grind her to a standstill she's going to have to confront what you're asking her to do which is give up <laughs> so and then with the help of you know the allies that you have along the way you can use your show of force to offer sympathy and mercy to her instead of obliteration through uh through army uh movements and there you go or if the narrative doesn't go well you can fend off el Terrell from the demon forces that are trying to climb up to it from the pit and chains that that lead into the city and if you can create a blockade with your own forces to prevent the enemies from raiding the city then if you can go again spoilers uh crack open the companion release the planetar and then gain your wish to be able to pull it back up into the material plane if you're able to hold off the the, the forces of hell so that you'd have the breathing room to make that agreement then you're having your social encounter to resolve the, the the campaign with a skill challenge but at the same time you're using superior forces to earn that space it's not it's not given to you by ex machina it's it's given to you uh by uh, by character agency in the story to will yourself to be in the position that you want and to have the strength to speak to everybody that's in the campaign as equals because of what you've accumulated so at fifth level you could be descending into Avernus, finding your way into the, the wastelands where there are infernal machines. If you can collect a large enough convoy of infernal machinists to have a mobile army working with you that can quickly, at like say 50 miles per hour, get you to Zariel's fortress, then you can accumulate more demons along the way, pick up some dragons maybe, 
have like a ragtag army of uh, of of uh, non-aligned uh, questionable creatures that don't want to have any stake in the blood war, but wants to be able to form their own band strong enough to stand against it. And your characters can be the for can be the can be the will that creates that way. And in payment, they back you while you achieve this thing of helping free Elturel from hell. So that's that's the thought process behind it. So last week we started uh, looking at the document of breaking apart the four different types of um, of machines that are in descent of Avernus, and uh, so you know you got you got the the Devil's Ride, which is a large size uh, non uh, non equipped fast machine. Uh, you've got the the Tormentor, which is uh, I think like your shock you know, like your general shock troop. Um, you've got the, uh, the demon grinder, which is gargantuan, which is designed to literally just crush and, and grind over demons. Um, is gargantuan compared to tormentors huge? And you got the scavenger, which basically picks up pieces. It's, it is generally a non-combatant type of, cre uh, type of construct. So what we did was we took the initial bits and converted them into the, uh, five foot scale at 50 feet. How fast can they move? And how many squares can they cover? Like you got five seconds equals six. Uh, five five foot combat occurs at the six second scale. Let's punt these things over since we have space. Here's the hit points that they're supposed to have. Um, is that right for the for the Hell's Ride? It only has thirty hit points. That doesn't feel like, wow. Thirty hit points. Okay, so the way that in command works, and uh, if you're if you've checked out another of these streams, you you probably know this already. But for the new kids here, hey new kids, um, we're looking at our map, and let's go here, there. Okay, so your character occupies a five foot square, right? And a devil's ride is like a horse. It's a ten foot. It's a ten foot area, and it only has thirty hit points. While your character, say at six level, probably has. 50 right so the way that in command works is that when you are it treats squads like mounts and vehicles are like constructs um as as descent into outerness lists here these are these are construct creatures so when using in command when you are um among your squad like in this five foot area like you would occupy one square then you'd have a guy a guy and a guy and the, the four of you basically can roam around as though this were like a horse or a mount or something, right? So with the, with the Devil's Ride, it's, it's basically a 5 by 10 but we don't do that anymore. So it has, it has a total size of here, and it says you can have one pilot and one passenger. But it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have any weapons. So the way that we're looking at the Devil's Ride is it, it's listed as having only, only 30 hit points. And it occupies a two by two space. Uh, using our translation, uh, it would. Hey, guy, why don't you stay on screen here with me, buddy? This this mouse gets in the way sometimes, <laughs> so it knocks my screen around. But uh, let's look at the playtest content here. There we go. Here, here. Uh, let's scroll down to looking at squads. Look at the hit point configuration of how these things work. Uh, scrolling down to how squads work. Okay, great. So a first rank squad has 10 hit points uh, per side. And a side is when you're looking at a two by two space. Where's that? When you're looking at a one by one, that's one facing. And when you're doing a two by two, that's a facing of two. So if you're first rank, you have 10 hit points. Per, per per side. So a two by two, first rank has 20 hit points. If it's a three by three squad, that squad cumulative has one, two, three sides. That's 30 hit points, right? If you are a higher rank, then you have, say, 20 hit points per square. So a two by two would be 40 hit points. This 30 hit points is an odd duck in between the 10 and 20 per scale. So chances are what I would do is call this, uh, let's go with Devil's Ride Large Hit Points. We will switch it to 40. So we're going to bop, bop, 
bop, bop, bop, bop. So that's gonna go rank, second rank, large. Uh, demon grinder has, whew, demon grinder has 200 hit points. So let's go look at the demon. Okay, so we know that the demon grinder is, boop, 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 boop. demon grinder is gargantuan, right? So that means gargantuan. Gargantuan is a four by four base. You got your pilot here. You got a whole bunch of vehicles. So four by four, it's got 200 hit points, right? And it's got one, two, three, four. That means that it has a base of 50 times four is 200, which means that it is, according to this, a demon grinder is a fifth rank vehicle. Five. A tormentor is huge. So, and a Tormentor has 60 hit points. So, huge size. One, two, three. 60 divided by three equals 20. And that means that at the 20 per square, that means that a Tormentor is also second rank. And a Scavenger has 150 hit points at huge size. 150, bump, 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 which means divide by that equals 50. So a scavenger is also fifth rank. How about that? So the way that the system works is that if you are... If, okay, so if you are in a squad... And you've got a bunch of mooks running around with you. You got spears and swords and and shields and and bows and arrows and stuff. So you're just a mercenary squad and you're running around, and you're like fighting ogres, right? So you got ogre and you got an ogre and you got an ogre. And so if you are operating a second rank squad, that means that squad has 60 hit points. When it takes 20 hit points of damage, it gets reduced down to a two by two squad with 40 hit points, which means these guys are eliminated, right? And if that 40 hit points gets scrapped again, it gets dropped down to a one by one space, or in this instance, it would just be you by yourself. So you've got this 40, you got this 40 hit points at this, at this size huge, at this size large. You've got 60 hit points at this size huge, which is what we see with a tormentor, right? So a tormentor is a second rank, huge size squad that you're commanding. If you get attacked, if your squad gets attacked, I mean, you can, you as an individual, Inside of a squad, there could be a called shot against you. Like, I am going to shoot the commander specifically with my bow and arrow, or I'm going to target him with Eldritch Blast, or whatever it is you're going to do. But if you're just, like, wading into this squad, and you're just, like, doing melee combat, because here's an ogre, and, and here comes another ogre stepping up on you, and here comes another ogre. You've now got these three ogres that are flanking you. Ogres get one attack per round, right? So they're going to blip you with your club and say to do, say this ogre does 15 points of damage, this ogre does 8 points of damage, and this ogre does 12 points of damage, right? And your squad has 60 hit points. If you take this 15 and 8 and 12, that's going to be 35 hit points, right? Knocking your squad from 60 down to 25, which means that you're going to scrap all of those and it basically just leaves you alone. Instead, what you can do is every uh, when you get attacked, you can have your squad here. The commander can take the damage. So if your character at fifth level has, say, 50 hit points and the construct that you're riding on has 60, and when you get dealt 15 damage, you can decide, do I want my construct to take that damage? Or do I want to take that damage on behalf of the construct? Oh, sorry. Um, the, the way that it works is if you have a, cre a single creature as your squad, like if, you have a, uh, like if you have a ranger and your ranger is playing in Dragonlance and so you have a huge size adult silver dragon that you're flying on and that, say, that dragon is third rank so it has 30 hit points per face so it has a total of 90 hit points right you can either since you can't make the dragon smaller when it loses hit points basically as long it, it has 
uh, disadvantage on morale checks. But as long as you stay in, stay mounted with it or stay in touching distance of it, then it's not afraid it can't lose its morale. So you can have it operate normally. So this infernal machine can afford to take up to 60 damage and still remain functioning as is intended with Descent into Avernus. When you have a whole bunch of little guys that you're grouping into a squad or similar to a swarm, then each one of them is, as a minion, very weak. So when you deal damage to the squad like an AoE, you can end up peeling off whole layers. But like if this ogre attacks your squad with its, with its mallet and it hits one, it's not killing five guys. Instead, you're getting rid of one. So if you've got in this three by three squad, you've got one, you've got you, and you've got three guys in the, in the large size, and then you've got five more people in the huge size footprint. Every time an ogre blats you with a hammer, you can either choose to take the damage yourself as the commander, or you can let the squad take the damage, and that would end up killing a whole bunch of troops at one time like with like... Uh, a sweeping blow knocking out four guys at one time you can narrate it like that or you have the option if it's a single target attack you can eliminate a single target so at that time you can have the ogres hit five times the squad hasn't taken any damage but you're but they're squashing a guy every time they swing their hammer instead of taking damage so the commander still has 50 hit points the squad hasn't taken any damage, but now that you've lost one, two, three, four, five guys, it drops your squad down to a two by two. So instead of having 60 hit points, two by two, it's now 40. The only time that 40 could make a difference is if like an ogre mage comes along and throws a fireball at you. Instead of the squad having 60 hit points to then make a saving throw and endure the damage taken, potentially surviving the hit, and it only has 40 hit points. So that fireball becomes a lot more dangerous. But when you've got uh, when you're just when you when you've got a squad that's fading big bads that are smashing you with a tree or or doing bite claw claw stuff, these single attacks, they can whittle down one one ally in your squad at a time. But as we've been discussing, when you're dealing with constructs, it's just a single large creature. So its hit point total actually um, endures down to the very last hit point. And at that point, the whole machine becomes broken. But as its pilot, its commander, while you're commanding that construct, Vroom, you're driving, then you've got its 60 hit points, like in the case of a Tormentor. It has its 60 hit points, and the pilot also has its own hit points, 50. So that effectively becomes... 110 hit points that your 50 hit point pilot can afford to take for the machine. And since it's a second since it's a second rank vehicle or a construct, which is a second rank, uh, because of the hit point tallies that it has, it, that's that's how it tells us what what rank it is. If you are too low of a level, um, it becomes difficult for you to uh, operate the, the demon grinder or the scavenger. That's how it's written. I'm not necessarily happy about that. Um, let's look at what, let's see if the book actually has comments on what the CR of these things are, because that could then push the CR to, uh, uh, level one, level rank. Here's your ranks. So that could actually convert the number of what its rank is. So let's see what the demon grinder is. The demon grinder is hmm yeah demon grinder doesn't have a cr so the demon grinder is a vehicle but it's not an actual creature so we don't have to pay attention specifically to the rank as far as how well can they be controlled. The, again, I'm just figuring this out. This is like in real time. This is the design of how to differentiate the scale of a boat for the, for, or, or a vehicle or ship, like a spell jammers coming out, uh, or for these infernal machines. How can we scale these machines so that there's stuff that your character can get a hold of at an appropriate level, and how did the hit points scale with it, right? So the Demon Grinder... 
and the scavenger are boy they're scaling really really differently so the way that we're looking at it is mm, see this uh, the scavenger isn't following the rules because it's a huge size of 150 hit points. Mishap. Let's look at that. Okay, let's look at that. Let's look at the DR, DG, SC, uh, TO, and SC, right? So we're looking at large and gargantuan and huge and huge, right? And we already know that the hit points here are supposed to be 30, 200, 60, 150. I honestly don't know how this is all going to turn out. Okay, so this is vehicle, and this is size, and this is HP. And now we have the um, threshold is 10. Uh, that oh, that's for the scavenger threshold. Scavenger 150 hit points, threshold of 10 for the scavenger, and the threshold for the demon grinder is also 10. Is that consistent? Tormentor threshold is also 10, and the devil's ride threshold is only. Five. Boy, oh boy, yet again, inconsistent. This is a light while these things are heavy. The, I don't know why the Tormentor only has 60 hit points in comparison to everything else. That just, that is befuddling me. Let's see if I can figure this out. Huge vehicle. Hmm. How long have I been streaming? Oops, sorry about that, guys. How long have I been streaming? Because I got a time limit today. Uh, I am 30 minutes in, so I'm gonna. I got another hour, so I'm gonna set a timer here for the 20 mark, for the 20 minute mark, for us to ex continue this exploration. So here, here, 20 equals start. All right, 20 minutes on the clock, and let's keep going. Okay, cool. Um, so, hmm, we're trying to build some consistency so that we can reliably build vehicles, right? So we're going to have to, okay, so, hmm, uh, vehicles don't have rank. That means that anyone can try to pilot one. So there's no restriction on the level to be able to command one because they're not actually they don't have their own sentience. They're just vehicles, which means that anyone can control them. But we now also have to look at how can, what's a way to, what's a way to consistently scale these things so that they have, so I have, uh, yeah, some sort of consistency. I'm seeing 50 feet per square uh, per side, and I'm seeing, um, looks like 20 feet per side for the large and the huge. Hmm. So if I add those things, if I add the threshold and the hip, so the way that threshold works is that you have to deal at least 10 damage. Uh, if I recall correctly, the way that threshold works is let's go look at that real quick for insight. And we're going to redo the action economy on these things too. Well, we're just rebuilding stuff. Damage threshold, uh, bulk, have bulk or armor. It allows them to shrug off minor hits. A vehicle with a damage threshold has immunity to all damage unless it takes the amount of damage equal to or greater than its damage threshold, in which case it takes damage as normal. All damage that falls uh, fails to meet or exceed the vehicle's damage threshold is considered superficial and doesn't reduce the vehicle's hit points. So, if you deal 20 hit points of damage, it deals 20 damage to the vehicle. If you deal three hit points of damage to the vehicle, it takes no damage because it's below its threshold. I don't think we need that. 
So let's uh, let's just let's just uh, look at how can we how can we build these out to be a little more sensible. So we're gonna go with don't have rank equals can be piloted by anyone. Let's go with um, commander is. Mm, uh, commander can be pilot or otherwise occupying the vehicle, right? Vehicles don't have rank. Any commander, any rank commander can command a vehicle. If the commander is not the pilot, uh, the pilot must be uh, aboard, must occupy So how are we want to do this? Okay, so Okay, so what's the fantasy? If you're on a motorcycle, you are driving the motorcycle, you are the commander. If the if the vehicle is large enough to have navigation, a pilot as well as a captain or commander that is coordinating movement, then the way, the way that the system works is that the commander can take damage and can do reactions on behalf of the squad, or in this instance, the vehicle. That, by, by logic, that would dictate that the pilot is always the commander. But in the case of like a starship where there's a helm crew that the commander is directing the orders of then the actual button presser doesn't have to be the commander. The commander is the one that's making the decisions. It's just that when you're on a motorcycle, the decision to turn left is you basically churning the wheel as an object interaction. So, um, so how do we want to do that? Um, So we want to spell that out as um, vehicles require a pilot. Oh, okay. And the pilot can be the commander, but doesn't have to be, but isn't required. But I don't know what the actual language on this is supposed to be. Isn't required as long as the commander and pilot both occupy space on the vehicle space in the vehicles both occupy the vehicles space that's that's the language we want to use as long as as long as the isn't required if if the commander and pilot both occupy the vehicle space um, uh, let's see um, commanding the vehicle is an object interaction not verbal command unless the vehicle specifically can follow verbal commands. The vehicle has one reaction, shares the reaction, shares its reaction. Okay, so in command, you can use, the commander can use its reaction uh, to, let's go see. 
<clears throat> let's let's go see the specific wording here for joining and commanding a squad. Design notes, squad damage, blah 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 squad actions. Full terrain, maintaining formation while you're working a bunch of guys in the squad. Like a vehicle is automatically gonna maintain formation because you can't just break up a vehicle. Commanding squads. Uh, when delving into dungeons in its current spaces, it's nearly impossible to effectively command hundreds of or even dozens of soldiers, but a small close quarter team is maneuverable enough to navigate these tunnels without becoming disorganized or losing morale. While exploring dungeons and engaging in combat using a five foot scale battle map, uh, typical of most dungeons, the maximum CR creature and command zone size of a character can command without maintaining morale is determined by their rank as shown in the command by rank table here. So two by two squad. And of course we're going to ignore the max zone size uh, for vehicles. You're either commanding a vehicle or you're not. Um, t -t 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 for checking morale. No, oh, where is the actual action economy? Basic command, battle squad, allies, design note, feats, basic squad. This is the, the live document you can check in the doobly-doo down below. Click on my Patreon link, and then you can access this on the front page at, at, without having to be a Patreon. Maintaining formation and movement, battle squad tactics, actions, scaling, squad, squad damage, bonuses, squad actions, damage and warming there, da -da -da, area, losing allies to damage, healing and recovering, squad spell casting, unique creature abilities, committing, where is, I'm looking forward to this being a PDF so I can just hop to different sections easily because this, this working document is just for the verse. <laughs> Happy to provide it for you guys, but yeah, I recognize that there's a lot of content here. Design notes, allies, combat, basic command, battle squads. Come on, give me the thing. Commanding squads. No, I was in that section. Checking morale. Sidebar. Joining the squadding command. Thank you. God, that should probably be a larger header. Uh, let's see. Okay, so while in command, uh, while the commander is in zone with a squad, the commander and squad share the following benefits. The squad acts on the same initiative and in tandem with the commander. The squad and commander both share the same movement speed, whichever is slower. In the case of vehicles, this is going to be whichever is faster. Because uh, normally, like when you're on foot, it makes a difference. You got a bunch of troops that are moving with you. If you got a bunch of guys that are moving at 20 feet, well. You're running around at 30 feet if you're going to stay in squad with them. I mean, you can command them at a distance. You just can't tank damage from them because they're not in your squad anymore. You're just commanding them remotely as though, like, like summon animal. And then you got a bunch of eagles and you send them off to go do something. It's, it's, you're not actually present with them. But this allows you to, whichever is, uh, move at the speed of the vehicle that you're riding. Uh, the commander can reposition themselves within the command zone, swapping positions with any other creature necessary to do so, as long as all the creatures and the commanders remain in formation. Uh, during movement. As part of movement. That is legit. Uh, commander can sacrifice their actions and bonus actions to give their squad additional actions instead. Um, so normally you could be like, uh, you use one of your action, like one of your attacks or your action if you only have one attack or your bonus action or all of them to have your squad attack multiple times or um, like use a, like a, anything that would require an action from a, a creature or the creatures that are inside of your squad you can use your action economy instead to have the squad perform those actions during combat. So you can sacrifice your actions, blah, blah, blah. Commander can use a reaction to take any amount of damage that the squad would take. If the squad isn't resistant or immune to the damage, the commander can't reduce this damage, even if you would otherwise normally be able to do so if you were the target of the damage. Fair, and a commanding concentration that takes damage this way must make a concentration check as normal. Commander can leave the joint zone, take actions away from the squad, but if you enter turn outside the command zone, you are no longer joined with the squad and lose all the benefits listed here. Cool. Okay, so as a reaction, you can choose to take damage for your vehicle. So if you are... There. 
damage. So, so you become the, basically the damage threshold. So we're getting rid of damage. Hmm. Do we want to keep damage threshold? I guess there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, so vehicle store and it's, uh, the vehicle shares its reaction uh, with the pilot. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I want to have any further definition between the pilot and the commander. Like, if you've got okay, so if you've got a you've got four characters that are hanging out on a tormentor, right? So let's this is this is what we're trying to build today. So getting getting to it. Uh, boop, boop, boop. All right, so we're gonna deal with the tormentor today, right? So here's your tormentor. Let's look at the rules for Tormentor. Four medium-sized creatures. Okay. What's the capacity? Just out of curiosity, Devil's Ride. What's the capacity for that? Capacity. What happens if it overwhelms capacity? Helm, drive, bonus, weapon, hit points... Creature cargo capacity. Creature capacity determines how many creatures can ride the infernal machine comfortably. More creatures can fit by squeezing or by clinging to the outside of the vehicle. Cargo capacity specifically specifies how much cargo the infernal war machine can carry. So let's look at that real quick. Okay, so the devil's the the devil's ride is size large and can carry one. A Tormentor is size huge and can carry four. That logically tells us that the Collector should also have four, while the Demon Grinder should be able to carry nine. Is that correct? Tormentor has four. Demon Grinder... Uh, creature capacity for some reason is eight, not nine. I have no idea why that's the case. And this is also eight instead of nine. So I, I don't understand why it has that rule, but I'm going to promptly ignore it. Let's see. Because that's that just doesn't, there's no logic there. They're not using logic today, folks. Let's see. Um, size equals size. Um, large equals one medium. Huge equals four medium. Uh, gargantuan equals nine medium. Medium equals one small. Small equals one tiny. There. Vehicle size. Um, passengers, right? One by one. We're gonna get rid of that nonsense. Oh, we're gonna go one by one equals one as tie. Two by two equals one med. Uh, three by three equals four med. Four by four equals Nine med five by five. It doesn't get bigger than the four by four according to D and D, but the Trask is fifty foot by seventy feet, so that fits in a thirty in a uh, in a seven by uh, the, the seventy feet. 
that that fits in a 14 by 14 foot square which is still considered gargantuan um, so the in command system allows you to continue scaling up larger and larger like if you're gargantuan 4x4 four four and you're fighting a squad that's 5x5 five five, since the 5x5 five five has a larger space than your 4x4 four four, the 5x5 lar- the five five can effectively grapple, overrun, uh, knock prone a 4x4 four four creature a 4x4 four four creature can effectively is capable of grappling a 5x5 five five, but a 6x6 six six is too unwieldy for it to do so but using the in command system, we can scale up to 6x6, etc., etc., etc. Medium, 6x6 six six is 25 medium. See how that's working? And then once you get to 10x10, 10 10, uh, that's there. 10x10 10 10 equals uh, 81 medium. Like that's that, there you go. So that's, that's how that carrying capacity continues to play out. Um, let's see, vehicle passengers. And like I said, we're just doing ideation here. So let's continue to look at how we can streamline these things. We're slowly and surely putting the pieces together. We can do, um, we wanna make, we want the, uh, the playtest content that we currently have for vehicles in the document here as at the end which is oh, we got wild shape stuff we got rangers um drake warden and beastmaster options and we're playing with uh, uh druid wild shape and polymorph allowing you to select any kind of creature at the level that you're able to cast at so but uh before that is the rules that we currently have for vehicles and siege weapons so we have boats that are currently built out we have um, siege weapons recalibrated from the DMG to how they would work in command and we can come back and we can visit these things with our infernal machines so well, right now we're just building out the base mechanics of the infernal machines so if the devil's ride is 30 that's really rounding uh, it's I, I'm I, I get what they're doing with it I get what they're doing with the damage threshold um, thank you maybe what we should do instead is increase the threshold play with, uh, play with, uh, reduce the hit points and increase the threshold maybe that's the right way to do this because that that 10 Hit point threshold remaining consistent across different sizes. It just isn't. It isn't. It isn't gelling with me. Um, if the threshold, what we could do instead is we can go with um, threshold equals. What, five times side? And then damage equals Sixty-eight huge. Uh, if it's five times side, then and if the damage is twenty by side, so uh, one by one equals five T and twenty HP. Two by two equals ten T. 40 HP, three by three equals 15 T, 60 HP, four by four equals 20 T, 80 HP, etc. Is that too aggressive? That's a rank. 
that's second rank. That's third rank. That's fourth rank. And that's fifth rank. So if we did threshold by rank, by, by size rank, again, they don't have ranks in scale of, um, uh, of can you command it or not, but because it's just a machine. But, but I do like, do like the idea Maybe maybe the threshold is by is by rank, so it's it's thresh equals uh, ten by uh, zone rank by zone rank. So that would mean the one by one, the two by two have 10 hit point each. The three by three and four by four, yeesh, they would have 20 each. This would be 30 by, let's see, you have to do 30. So at the, at a, as a 25 by 25 foot vehicle, you would have to do at least 30 points of damage to do any damage to it all. That sounds a little too strong, don't you think? Maybe it should be five. This would be 20. 40 foot large vehicle, 100 foot vehicle. And then if we're upscaling, uh, instead of the five foot by five foot, you're at 50 foot by 50 foot, right? And 100 foot by 100 foot, that's first rank. See how that works uh, when you're working with scale? Here, let's go look at that document. Uh, when we're working on scale, when you're at the 50 foot scale, like a 50 foot by, like, like for example, a Tarasque is gonna fit a 100 by 100 foot space, right? Uh, so that that scale, let me get up here. Uh, here's an example at the 50 foot scale. Your rank, 100 hit points at 50 foot scale, 200 hit points at the 200, uh, with uh, 50 foot scale, each 50 foot square, if your first rank it's 100 hit points instead of 10. It's 200 hit points instead of 20. It's 300 hit points instead of 30. 400 hit points instead of 40, and 500 hit points instead of 50. It's just scaling up by 10. We've, we've discussed that on, on multiple previous streams. Um, if you aren't up to date on the on the full playlist, just go ahead and, and, and click, into the, click into my playlists and look at in command. And I just walk through this over and over again uh, to see how these mechanics play together. And so at the 50 foot scale, the damage threshold would continue to increase as well. Okay, so you've got a 100 foot long, 100 foot wide. It's the third the size of a football field, right? So, okay, let's, let's actually build a football field. So 250 by 250. Uh, American football, of course, none of that crazy soccer stuff. That's going to be 150. So for you to damage a structure that's the size of a football field, for you to do anything meaningful to slow it down, you would have to be doing 150 hit points of damage or more, right? Now, if you're at the one, if you're at the 50 foot scale, the damage that you're going to be dealing is going to be like, say, if you guys are carrying swords at the 50 foot scale, it's going to be D8 times 10. So you're potentially doing up to 80 damage with that sword. If you have a mob of 
50 guys. Okay, so you've got a, up to 100. You have a mob of 100 guys with swords that are attacking a tank the size of a football field. They did 80 points of damage on a good roll this round. Did that hurt the 300 foot long tank? I'm going to argue the answer is no. Those swords are not effective to damage your super tank. So that means that you're going to have to be dealing with stuff that's huge as well. At the, at the 300 foot scale, that's a six by six squad. That would be dealing six if you have a three hundred, if you have a football field worth of soldiers that are mobbing this tank, that instead at the six by six scale would be doing six d eight damage. Not fifty foot squares, one d eight times ten. So a, a three hundred foot space at the five foot square is a six by six squad, which is going to be doing six d eight times ten damage, potentially up to four hundred and eighty damage every time this swarm of 3,000 troops <laughs> that, uh, mobs your tank, that, yes, they can slowly tear that thing apart. That I feel that is more reasonable. So it's just a matter of scaling things. If you are just a guy and you've got a mech that's 400 times your size, then yeah, your, your pistol's not going to do any damage to it. So move along. Uh, that's where Siege Machinery actually comes into play, where a trebuchet is going to deal. Like, what kind of damage can trebuchets, what, what kind of damage can these dudes do? We're looking at vehicles, we're looking at damage thresholds. Um, D10 times 10, so yeah, like uh, um, crew rank, specializations, uh, D8 times 10, a cannon or a trebuchet is doing D8 times 10 damage on a hit. Oof, that's not going to be able to get through it either, but you can start damaging 50 foot structures. 100 foot structures and again it's 150 200 does that feel appropriate because you should be scaling up the size of your of your threats uh, to meet the the, the challenge uh the, that your that your characters are facing so like that means that you need bigger weapons bigger guns that are going to be doing more damage so does that work at a glance 25 this would be not 30, it'd be 25. Hmm. Okay, so the 10 by 10 is 100 feet, right? 100 feet by 100 feet. And the 50, uh, the 50 foot by 50 foot scale. Oh uh, yeah, 10 by 10 is 50 feet. So the 50 foot by 50 foot scale should be the same here as the 50 foot by 50 foot scale, which means that this needs to be 50, which means that that's fifth, which means this is 40, which means this is 30, which means this is 20. Which means that this is 10. So 10, f hmm. if, if that scale is appropriate. Hmm. So five by five is 10. 50 by 50 is 50. That's only five times more. It matches scale here, but it doesn't match scale here. At the 50 foot by 50 foot scale, this would have 200 hit points because it's five by five times 10. And if this is second rank, then it'd be 20 hit points, 20 times 10, that's 200. Um, 20, 40, 60, 80, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. And that lines up here at 200. So this aligns the 20 and the 200, and the 200. So 200 works here and 200 works here, but the damage threshold doesn't that is really interesting 
because this is only scaling up by a factor of five while this is scaling up by a factor of 10. And that's where the disconnect is. Because we aren't dealing with damage thresholds under normal circumstances. So, <clears throat> so the question then becomes: Do we mean do we keep damage thresholds in command? Or does in command keep th damage thresholds, or do we get rid of damage thresholds and instead um, So that doesn't necessarily work. So let's see, large equals two by two, garg equals four by four. The devil grinder has 200 hit points, huge equals three by three. So what, this has 30, and this has either 60 or 150, and this has 200. Yeah, I am not, I am not feeling that. So how do I make this, how do I square this circle? Weird that the tormentor is so fragile compared to the scavenger. Like the scavenger is a piece of junk, dude. <laughs> it's like those should have been reversed. What if ten hit points at the five foot scale? Okay, so let's, um, what about five? What about five feet? Ugh, the tormentor is supposed to, the two by two is supposed to have a five, uh, supposed to have a five threshold. That's supposed to be 10. Could do it. I could. I could potentially do it like this. Poof, man, that gets pretty damn ridiculous, pretty damn quick. So I can't just infinitely scale damage thresholds uh, because it cuts off the uh, it, it cuts off the same scale weapons too quickly. At the at the five foot scale where characters are potentially lobbing around significant damage, I I can get it. I think uh, I, you know what honestly I, I think a more ele I think a more elegant solution would be. Um, um, that single target, uh, single target attacks deal half damage while AOE does full damage. 
Like if you hit it with a fireball and it's got 200 hit points and you do 60 points of damage, you're going to do 60 points of damage. If it is a sword or uh, an arrow or a spear or an eldritch blast, if it's single target like that, instead of doing like like nine damage, therefore zero damage, instead it just does four damage. And if the thing can tank 200 hit points of damage, that makes it like it has 400 effectively. And like magical weapons don't like it. It has it has resistance to uh, all all single target attacks, whether magical or not. Maybe that is, and of course it's immune to psychic damage and whatever bloody blah you add on top of it. I think that I think that's going to ultimately be a better solution. I think that makes a lot more sense. So. Um, Vehicles equals AOE, uh, damaging vehicles. Let's go with damaging vehicles. Um, single target equals one half resistant. AOE damage equals normal. That works. <clears throat> By zone space. Vehicle HP. What if instead of the vehicle having a static hit point total, what if the hit points that the vehicle has depends on the rank of the pilot? So a first rank pilot, that uh, a, a first rank character that is piloting a devil grinder is a gargantuan sized creature, but it's going to take it, it can't take nearly as much damage as if it was a fifth rank pilot that was able to maneuver, um, swerve, juke, corner, so that it can endure a lot more damage, following the same damage, the, the same damage um, uh, vehicle damage thresholds that we have down here. But you just have a lot more hit points as you scale up. So that Devil's Ride, like uh, Vehicle HP, 10 times Pilot Rank, times Squad Face. Etc. 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 Fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred, one fifty, two hundred. 
100, 250, 500, 750, 1,000, 1, 2, uh, 1, 5. Is that right? 2, 5, oh. I think, uh, hmm, okay, so the hit point, hmm, the hit point capacity increases, this is, it gets us into higher scale stuff if we choose. Pardon me while I obsess over stuff. OCD kicking in here, folks. Don't mind me. Yeah, that's tracking. Okay, so I'm I'm digging that. I think I'm digging this vibe in general. The vehicle doesn't have any ranks because it's just a vehicle. So it's up to the so it's up to the skill of the pilot. So you can give the same vehicle to. I kind of like that. You can give the same vehicle to any adventurer. And the scale of the vehicle, the, the vehicle will scale and remain uh, and remain uh, viable for the character as you go up in levels. Like in Spelljammer and stuff like that, it's going to be really important as you're facing off against dreadnoughts and uh, and hammer ships and scorpion vessels and nautiloids. I feel like that's going to be really, really relevant. That the and that and that leaves vehicles really didn't like high like high cr creatures that command ships those ships now become high cr as well like if your characters don't have any business fighting nautiloids on a one to like fighting a lifted one to one then you don't have any business fighting nautiloids one on one because that nautiloid is gonna is gonna clean house with you wreck it's gonna wreck face And then just the, uh, yeah, and then the damage vehicles is single target damage resistant, AOE equals normal. I feel, I feel like, and then, and then you can, as, and then the uh, uh, command reaction equals uh, take damage for the vehicle. There you go. So that's, uh, I, I think that works. I think that's, I think that's good enough to play test. So let's, that's what we're going to end up doing. So let's now look at weapons. Weapons. Let's see what these guys carry on them. The driver can use its reaction to grant the devil's rider advantage on dexterity saving throws. Okay, that's cool. No weapons. Tormentor. Weapons. Okay, well, it's, oh, okay. Let's let's uh, let's resolve. Uh, piloting action economy. Um, object interaction equals uh, 
command vehicle to move. Um, bonus action and bonus action. Hmm. Uh, bonus action equals disengage dodge dash action equals What's the speed on these things? Speed is 100. All these things have a speed of 100. Let's do some math. Um, six seconds times 10 equals one minute times 60 equals an hour. So if I have two if I have two actions, oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> um, the speed of this, if I use a object interaction to make the thing go, I use a bonus action to dash, and I use an action to also dash times three. That means that the speed in feet equals the speed in miles per hour. Sorry, KPH, you guys are a uh, are, are SOL. KPH equals SOL. This works. This works with our crazy, our, our crazy. I don't know, imperial, imperial measurements. <laughs> the imperial nation using imperial measurements. Go figure. So speed 100 feet equals 100 miles per hour, while a uh, devil's ride can go 120 miles per hour. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty good with that. Um, I feel like like if you're dedicating that that would be dedicating all of your action to just making the thing go. And so if instead of making thing go, you have to disengage to try to break away from something without taking an attack that's gonna slow you down. And if you use the dodge action to swerve and bob, that's also going to slow you down because you're doing swervy stuff instead of just flat out, instead of just flat out runs. So I think I'm okay with that action economy being used that way. And... And while the in-command system, like if you were a 20th level fighter and you have four attacks per round, you'd be able to use, um, if you were commanding troops that, that had sentience that, that could obey your verbal command, you'd have your free verbal command. Then you'd have your bonus action. And then you'd have your one, two, three, four. You'd have your four. You could potentially have that, that at 20th level, a 20th level fighter could potentially have your squad attack six times. If you have them hasted, um, that would not apply to the squad because haste has a bonus action apply to everything. Um, if you're a samurai, that would not apply because you can convert your bonus, your advantage of, uh, you can abandon your advantage on attacks to gain extra attacks, but that does not apply to commands. So um, you, that, I'm, I'm liking how that's working out. Okay, great. So that's consistent uh, for piloting actions. Like if you were a barbarian that's piloting uh, uh, an infernal machine that has at most two attacks per round, then you'd have your object interaction, your bonus action, and if this was if these were sentient creatures, you would then be able to use both attacks to have a total of 
four attacks per round. But no, no, that's that's true. You can't push squads to dash twice in a round. It still has the same limitations that you would have the squad move, which is normal movement, and then you could use a bonus action to command it to dash, and then that would be its that would be its its movement cap for the round, as you would expect like a horse to be able to do. You can use your you can use your bonus action to spur your horse on to take the dash action and that's and you're sharing your bonus action with it so it's done that makes sense but with the infernal machines you're just basically pointing things so th I, i'm cool with this uh you can't use your iterative attack your iterative attacks to perform additional piloting actions so i'm pretty happy with that but when you get the weapons you can assuming they don't have a loading speed, but the loading speed can feed into your action economy. So let's look at that. Great. So I'm really happy with the piloting, and uh, and I'm and I'm really happy with the speed. That the 100 miles per hour for these things tunneling across the desert feels pretty good to me. I am perfectly content with that. That's what ten times faster than your character is expected to do, to, uh, to be running around the battlefield. I think I'm pretty good with that. Um, let's look at weapons real quick. See what we can fish out of here. Crushing wheels can move through the space of a medium or smaller sized creature. And it does. Uh, weapons equals um, overrun, crush, target two sizes smaller, deals. Hmm. Crushing wheels is um, uh, deals 2d 2d10 plus save or prone if already prone extra 2d10. And that's sort of size huge. So what does the demon grinder crushing wheels do? It does 40 10 damage, and if you're already prone, it does an additional 40 10 damage. No consistency here, no consistent pattern. So we have to build, we have to build a pattern of consistency. They are they're really they're leaning that that gargantuan that gargantuan vehicle in a lot heavier. Let's see if the scavenger has anything. Crushing wheel. Oh, scavenger has crushing wheels too, huh? And it does 3D10. That's so weird. Such a mishmash. Let's do, um, okay, overrun. Overrun. Okay, I'm good with that. Um, yeah, I'm, actually, I'm content with that for now. Let's see what else we got going on here. Tormentor can juke. That's cute. 
Uh, raking skies. When the tormentor moves within five feet of a creature that isn't prone or another vehicle for the first time in a turn, it can rake the creature or vehicle with its protruding blades for 2d10 plus 2 slashing damage. The creature moves out of the way and takes no damage if it succeeds a dexterity saving throw. The vehicle moves out of the way and takes no damage if its driver succeeds a saving throw. So that's the Tormentor. And the Demon Grinder. Does it have raking blades? No. Does this have raking blades? Harpoon Slinger. No. Okay. So raking. So raking blades is only on the Tormentor, which is I'm guessing these. The, this these front mounted things or maybe it's the back mounted it, it doesn't really it doesn't really say it's within five feet when the tormentor moves within five feet of a creature that isn't prone or another vehicle for the first time on its turn Isn't prone, huh? Target two sizes smaller. Go with uh, raking size. <laughs> More or less. One size. Instead of that prone stuff, let's go with one size smaller or more. All right, we're gonna finish up. We're gonna finish up what we got here, and we're gonna come back and next week, and we're gonna convert more of this stuff. One d eight. Let's see. One d ten by per facing. to avoid. Well, that's kind of that's kind of passive, isn't it? These are these are like movement based weapons. Um, Movement. swipe. Let's call it that instead.
It doesn't say there's any limit to how many how many target like you could like you could like drive through a line of of large sized demons that are standing there, and uh, and there's like if you in your hundred feet of movement if you hit six if you move within five feet of six demons, each of them has to make a saving throw to avoid being hit. Basically how that how that pans out. You can do it once per round. Yeah, if they're two sizes small, you're just going to run over them. If they're one size or larger, you can do it. You can swipe. Let's call it a swiping ram. Targets one size smaller or larger. Yeah, or more. One D ten by facing, yeah, that feels good. Within five feet? Huh. Kind of me. It's a little word salad but I'm trying to redux it just to get the gist of how things go. Uh, and that's all that the Tormentor. Oh, oh, wait, here we go. Helm, and then it's got a harpoon flinger. Let's grab that. These are weapons. Harpoon flinger. See what else we got on here? Harpoon flinger, and we've got demon grinder has chomper, and a wrecking ball. Fingers and then grappling claw. I'm just gonna grab these. I 
Okay, so let's see. We're I'm pretty happy with where movements at. I'm happy with the pol the piloting action economy. I'm happy with resolving the damage of vehicles. I'm happy with the commander taking a reaction to take damage from the vehicle once per round. Up to once per round. Set vehicle. There you go. Uh, damage vehicles, and I'm happy with the hit points that they now have, scaling with size. So if you are a 6-level character in Avernus and you are piloting a Devil's Ride, it will have 40 hit points. If you are in Avernus, you are 6-level, and you are piloting a Tormentor, which is a 3x3, three three, it has 60 hit points. If you are piloting a... Devil Grinder, it only has 80 hit points, but as you gain levels, it'll scale up with you to 100 for the uh, Devil's Ride, 150 for the Tormentor, 200 for the Demon Grinder. But that Demon Grinder doesn't need to be a 4x4. That Demon Grinder could be an 8x8, which is going to put it at 240, um, 300. 60 186 times 20 to 30 that's 180 and this is 210 so yeah you can have you can have these gargantuan is the largest size that they have but let's let's see what it actually says maybe i should actually look at how this thing reads a demon grinder is a bulky armored coach that rumbles loudly as it crushes obstacles and enemies in its path with the help of the swinging ball chain Iron jaws are mounted to the front of the vehicle, which handles like a garbage truck. Chomper. That's a chomper. Okay. And let's see if it has any flavor text about... Nope. Zero flavor text. Um, gargantuan is the limit. It doesn't make any statement about how these things actually... How big these things actually are. He's got one guy for comparison here. That is suspiciously missing for all the rest of these because I don't think they actually know how big they are. I don't think they know how, like, where things sit inside. <laughs> They're so flippant with building these things. There should be more structure to them. So that's, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to build structure to these things. Um, we're looking at um, the Demon Grinder, which has the helm, which is a seat. The Chomper, which is the front end of things, requires a crew to handle it. Wrecking Ball, which requires one guy to handle it. Chomper at the front end here. It's supposed to be like a garbage truck, which means it's supposed to pick it up. Wrecking Ball, one guy, one guy, one guy, one do guy. One, two, three, four out of 16. Hmm, okay. So each of these things is basically taking up a five foot square on the map of this. So if I'm working with a Tormentor, what has a Tormentor got going for it? Someone has a harpoon flinger and a helm. That's it. So I'm looking at a, at a tormentor here. It's got tormentors a three by three. It has a harpoon station. It's got a pilot station, and it's basically got four spaces somewhere around inside of here doesn't really talk about what happens if you have too many people on it, but they can still hang off of it. Huh, that's interesting. That, like they say, like it has passengers of four, but you can have a whole bunch that's hanging off of them without really talking about how many can hang off of them. So I think the sensible way for us, ooh, I ran out of music. I think the sensible way for us to handle this is to have a, uh, an action station for potentially for each square. Maybe there needs to be a limit on how many action stations it can have. As a vehicle, so it doesn't have to fit in this square per se. It can have one, two, three, four, or it could be one, two, three, four. I guess, I guess the, I guess when you build it, you can decide which squares it's going to occupy. So. Um, would it be that's passengers but then there's spacing there's more spacing than passengers that's interesting to me K 
can you double the capacity? Can it, does it iteratively double the capacity? You've got nine here, which are quote unquote passengers, and you got nine that can hang off of it. So you've obviously got a lot more than just nine around the perimeter here. So that works. And you've got four passengers here on the uh, on the demon uh, on the on the tormentor. Pilot, you got a pilot. You got all this, which is like open seating. So I, I guess I guess a, a demon's ride is more like uh, is more like this, where you got your wheel and your wheel, and it's like built like this. Tormentor, which I guess is built kind of like this. I can see why there only be four by four sitting inside of there. And then I can see on the Tormentor there that it's got this like big face thing, like maybe only four guys fit in here and you got a wheel here and a wheel here and a wheel here and a wheel here. And this one, two, three, four is where they think uh, oh no, it allows up to eight. So yeah, yeah. they. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking vehicles need to have uh, crew placement, um, action stations for weaponry systems or whatever, um, as well as like, boy oh boy, uh, I'm thinking like hard points, armor things. Eww. Not necessarily happy with that. I'm, I'm pleased with where we've come along so far in translating most of this stuff, but I think the next time around, I think next week, we are going to uh, build out stations and look at scaling for like, like how big of a, like, like if I, like if I have a Tormentor here and it can have up to nine as passengers, does that mean it can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Could it potentially have eight? Like these are like these are passengers that don't necessarily have to, like either passengers or like their cargo space. Um, what's the cargo space that we have on these things? Uh, this will be the last thing I look at. Cargo capacity is five hundred for Tormentor. Cargo space is one hundred for Devil's Ride. Demon Grinder. Cargo space is one ton. And then cargo space is 2,000, 2,000, 500. That's weird. A ton. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 2,100. 300 for space. Uh, this is 500. 5 times 100. And then the demon's ride, devil's ride. It's 2 by 2. Only has, so that's, that's 33 per space. This is 100 per space. And this is Roughly 300 per space. I think there's a solution there, but I'm going to save till I'm going to wait till next time to look at it. So that's where we're going to end for today. And uh, I really appreciate the time you've taken spent with me looking at this. This is uh, this is how you know. 
This is how we develop books. This is how we make the things do. We take what's there and we build on top of it so that things, so that life makes sense. So um, I'm looking for, um, on Monday, we're gonna be back with Marshall Powers Monday and we're going to be, uh, I think we're gonna be looking at uh, feet conversions into powers as well as uh, looking again at Ranger Conclaves to see if there's need for further conversion into the power paradigm. And uh, I think that's all I have on task. So I, I won't be around this weekend. So uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Like, subscribe, check all this stuff out that, that we're building on, uh, on my Patreon. It's free to look at. Certainly love your support. Check me out on Twitter. Follow me there so you can see what's going on. Um, check out my books on DM Skill. Free for you to look at. And um, like, subscribe, tell a friend. See you guys on the other side. Thanks a lot.